I've had this Royal Enfield Classic 350 for a few months now from Royal Enfield and in this video I'm going to give you my conclusions about the bike having had it for a period of time. The only real question or concern that people seem to have about this bike which they tell us in the comments on our videos about it is that is 20 horsepower enough in the real world and the best way I can answer that is to say to you that you need to define yourself first of all as what kind of rider you are. If you're the sort of rider that wants to go out and accelerate as fast as possible, to ride as fast as possible, to overtake everyone all the time, to take corners as fast as possible and lean over as much as possible and see a ride as this opportunity to ride as fast as possible. This is not the bike for you. This is a bike where you get on and go somewhere, take your time, enjoy every mile, and it's a brilliant bike for that. It will go on the motorway, it will do 70, 75 at a push, but it's much happier at 60 miles an hour. But this is the bike that you don't really want to take on long journeys on the motorway. This is the bike you want to get off onto the B roads and explore the little places that you see when you're off the main roads. And that is what this bike is all about. This bike really has impressed me because it is a bike you can go literally anywhere with. Um, I've been on so many different types of roads, including off-road. I found myself on an off-road track which was very bumpy and very steep like that. And the bike handled it without any problem whatsoever. And with the right tires, you could use this bike as a genuine little trail bike for uh, not too gnarly stuff, not enduro stuff, but it would do anything. So as an exploration tool, this bike is perfect for that. It really is superb. And it's an enjoyable ride. The little engine with a long stroke piston travel gives you plenty of torque low down in the rev range and that's what you need when you're pootling around and exploring especially off-road where you can just chug 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 along and it delivers its power nice and smoothly uh, whereas a lot of uh, powerful bikes it's all high up in the rev range and people are hooked on power figures but if you look at where the power is produced it's usually uh, eight and a half nine and a half ten even eleven thousand rpm on powerful bikes and that's screaming and I know people like doing that but like I said the mentality you would have coming to this bike wouldn't be that. Coming on to the design of the bike, like I said in my previous videos, it really is superb. The design of the front mudguard, for instance, covers the whole wheel. And in the past, people designed things based on the knowledge about the use of the product they were designing, whether it's a bike or a cheese grater. And they understood that covering the whole wheel means that the bike's not going to get caked in water, muck, filth and mud, and neither are you. Whereas the little short mud guards they produce today are purely a design aesthetic and have no practical uh, purpose whatsoever. So I'd love to see motorbikes going back to the proper functionality of design that they had in this era, well I say this era is a brand new bike isn't it, but in the era of a classic bike from the say 60s uh, where everything was designed to be functional as well as beautiful. You've got lovely chromed uh, spoked wheels, I love those. The engine is superb and it looks really beautiful, beautiful design, nice and simple, air-cooled, I just love air-cooled engines on motorcycles and the exhaust pipe obviously complies with all the modern regulations, but it sounds okay actually, and of course you can change that if you wanted to, and if you do put a larger air filter that breathes a little bit more, it just opens the bike up a little bit better. You've got the twin shock suspension, which is perfectly good, uh, functions very nicely, and of course having it uh, further back on the bike like it is, gives you more space here, whereas if you've got a mono shock, it's got to fit under here somewhere, uh, which is harder for cramping in all the bits that a motorcycle has to have. And then you've got the rear mudguard, which covers the whole wheel, and again, functions very, very nicely indeed. And the furthest back part, I believe, has to be the number plate. So a lot of modern designs design a nice looking rear mudguard that kind of finishes there, and they sign it off saying, that's beautifully done, I'm happy with that. And then they say, right, we've got to put the number plate and the lights on, and they stick this dreadful plastic thing on the back or one of those horrible extender things, which I can't bear. Uh, so with this, 
it just fits nicely to the back of the mud guard, as do the lights and the indicators. Nice and simple, beautifully designed, functional and practical. It's got a very comfortable seat and a nice riding position. The foot pegs are in the middle and not back here, so that's nice. If you're as tall as me, six foot two, then I would like the seat to be a little further back. I don't believe there's uh, an accessory bracket where you can slide the seat back three inches. If there was, that would be perfect, that really would. Uh, the handlebars are fairly narrow, which is good in the traffic. But one thing I really did notice with this bike is the turning circle is absolutely superb. You can turn around in no space at all. And if you notice, a lot of modern faster bikes have a terrible turning circle and the lock to lock is almost nothing. So you have to do a six point turn to turn around anywhere. With this, you can do it in one go. At the front here, you've got this sort of headlight stroke instrument cowl thing, which isn't the prettiest part of the bike, but it's kind of classic and it harps back to previous years. I love the uh, analog speedometer. You can't beat analog. It's the perfect way. If it isn't broke, don't fix it. And I don't know why um, I keep saying about design, but they keep trying to come up with new things that they don't need. And that's why design is not improving. Um, what else have we got? Very simple controls here. So you just got your on off switch here. Uh, it has a light and on the other side, your indicators and your lights. And that's it. No modes, no nothing. You don't need modes. It's a perfect bike without them. And there's very little you can fault with this motorcycle, I must say. Um, Size-wise, like I said, it's a little small for taller people. So up to six foot, you're going to be absolutely in the sweet spot. Above six foot, it's possible, um, but compromised like everything in life. If you're above six foot four or five, six, then you know, you're going to have to put the seat way back and do something about the handlebars, but you can still ride it. Now, one subjective question, is this bike cool? Now, I think that depends on who the rider is. If you're a taller person above six foot, then it's a bit hard to look cool because the bike is quite small and you look like a giant on it. But if you're a normal height person, then yeah, it is pretty cool. As long as you're wearing the right gear. If you're wearing high vis, then of course it's not cool. If you're wearing a nice cool leather jacket, some cool jeans, nice boots, beautiful gloves, cool helmet, retro helmet, yeah, that's cool. Uh, so it depends what you're wearing as well. So the whole package, yeah, this is a cool bike. One superb thing about this bike is that it'll do 107 miles per gallon or 89 USA miles per gallon, which is fantastic. The sun's come out. When I woke up this morning, the sky was blue. It was glorious. I thought it's going to be a great day for a video. And then it clouded over and it's come out for about three seconds. It's gone back in again. British summertime. We've had two weeks of pure, beautiful sunshine. Uh, that was seven or eight weeks ago. And every day since it's rained. So today's the nicest day in the last two months. Uh, worst summer in my life, to be honest. So that's not so good. Um, which is why we haven't seen so many bike uh, videos because uh, the weather's been just atrocious. So there we have it. The Royal Enfield Classic 350 just goes to prove that you don't need a speed demon of a motorcycle to have a wonderful time. It's a brilliant motorcycle and I highly recommend it.